What would happen if you found out that you won the lottery? After you won the lottery, $5 million, for instance, okay, $10 million. Five minutes later, somebody walks past you, spits at you. Would you care? Highly unlikely. It's highly unlikely that you'd care. What would happen if somebody walked past and dropped a whole bunch of litter, garbage in front of your house? Would you care? Probably not. <laughs> I just won the lottery. I won $5 million. I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less if you drop litter in front of my house. I couldn't care less if you drop calligraphy in front of my house. I couldn't care less. I'll get somebody. I have money. It's $5 million. I can have somebody come and pick it up. Clear it up for me. You wouldn't care for anything. What would happen if after you won $5 million, somebody said to you, I don't like you. I really dislike you. I hate you. Would you care? Not likely. You wouldn't, you really wouldn't care. Very little will bother you in life if you won the lottery. Why is that? And why can't we actually do the same kind of thing that we do when we win the lottery? Jessica, what kind of question is that? If I win the lottery, I have everything I want. Thing is though, that you could have a lot of what you could have when you win the lottery, you could have without winning the lottery. How? How so? By loving yourself. Loving yourself from a very, very deep, deep place from within. You know, over the past few months, I've been doing intermittent fasting. I've been doing fast in general. And what that has done for me has given me a very, very principled life. Today was Day of Atonement. I fasted for 36 hours. Sorry, not 36. It was more like 31. I fasted for 31 hours and... It was no big deal. It felt very cool. It felt like I was just being very, very principled. It felt really nice. I was fasting. I was connecting with people who were fasting. I was connected with God, connecting with God, etc. But I felt like I was loving myself from a very, very deep place from within. I didn't win the lottery. Nope. I didn't win the lottery. I didn't gain a lot in my life as such. But there's one thing I've gained, and that is a certain element which you gain when you win the lottery, and that is a deep, deep sense of self-love. A deep, deep sense of, I'm not bothered if somebody has a problem with me, because I love myself from a very deep place from within. I have $5 million, for instance, when you win the lottery. So, you do get that element when you do the kind of different fasts I've been doing lately, intermittent fasting, um, Four day fast, four day water fast, which I did about a week and a half ago. It finished. I did that fast when I was surrounded by people. I'll never forget what it was like. It was the Jewish New Year, and I was surrounded by people. I was discussing a lot, a lot of discussions with the people around me, whilst a lot of food was being brought out. And it didn't interest me because I had a very, very deep, deep sense of love for myself. And so, when you win the lottery, you have a deep, deep sense of self-love for yourself and nothing bothers you anymore. You know, the first prayer in the Day of Atonement, and I mentioned this on Monday as well, the first prayer is the prayer of Kol Nidre. All vows, all omens, all, um, ex all means of excommunicating others, all means of rejecting others are hence nullified and are hence to be seen as irrelevant. Now, on Monday I said that this actually points and it's an indication to the point that in order to start your spiritual journey on the Day of Atonement, in order to start your journey on the Day of Atonement, you got to start off a day. The very, we're doing the very first thing of accepting yourself, not blaming yourself, not disliking yourself. Only then could you consider forgiving others. And only at the very, very end, towards the end of Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, 
could you consider asking God for forgiveness and becoming one with God? It's a very, very interesting thing because, you know, we kind of get the impression that the Day of Atonement is all about speaking to God, asking God for forgiveness, expecting God to forgive us. But who is God? Has it ever crossed your mind who is God? No, he's not a scary man with a long white beard in the sky. That's not actually true. Does God care whether you're religious or secular? No. He's not interested. Doesn't care. He created most of the people on this planet. I think probably not most. A lot of people on this planet are not religious at all. And God keeps them alive and keeps them going for many years. So God doesn't care if you're religious or secular. Does God care if you're spiritual, spiritualist? If you are a spiritualist? No. God didn't create the world that way. But he created the world one way. And that is to be godly, you have to you have to go through a process of forgiving yourself, then being able to forgive others, and then being able to connect with God and surrender to God. Those are three elements to connection to God. And the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is all about going through those three stages. That's why we, they start off the prayer. We start off the prayer in the Day of Atonement with Kol Nidre, all vows, all means of rejecting others. All means of excommunicating others. All means of carrying on our adapt our adapted bad habits. All that you gotta go because if you adapt bad habits, you you adapt bad habits of of seeing yourself a certain way. You adopt bad habits of seeing God a certain way, defaming, defiling God's name as a result. All of which are blockages for you to start off your ascension on your Kippur David Atonement. And get off the ground, forgiving others, connecting with God. What is the idea of connecting to God, with God? What is the idea of surrendering to God? The idea, the concept, is to quite literally surrender to God, forgive yourself, forgive others. God created others in your life. God created you, right? You're all part of that creation. Become godly. Become strong. Love yourself and surrender to God by becoming godly. And it goes along with the entire journey of Yom Kippur, of the Day of Atonement. I want to carry on point out the, the, this vital concept which we do in the Day of Atonement. And that is we do introspection. And we reconsider those people who we excommunicated, whom we, we rejected. And we hence realize that when we reject others, it's because... We feel threatened by them. You don't dislike somebody unless you feel threatened by them and you feel incomplete within you. You can't dislike somebody else if you are entirely complete inside of you. You can't reject somebody else if you are fully complete from within. And that's why hurt people tend to hurt others. That's why people in pain tend to be unforgiving tend to have principles which are unforgiving and tend to be very hard on others because they are very hard on themselves. They don't love themselves. In my lifetime, I became confused and consumed by other people who rejected me, who were uncompromising in the way they dealt with me. And for many, many years, I saw that as something to do with me. But it took me a very long time to realize that it's not so. It's the thing that those people who rejected me, those people who were uncompromising in their dislike towards me, those people who couldn't engage in any means of forgiveness, of reciprocation, right? Mutual exchange of ideas, of thoughts, of forgiveness in general. People couldn't forgive me. It was down to their inability to forgive themselves. They felt very incomplete inside. Like I said, you cannot. It's impossible. It's totally impossible to dislike somebody else and like yourself at the same time. And equally, it's impossible to be impatient towards somebody else and totally like yourself at the same time. 
If you win the lottery, would you would you have a problem of being impatient with somebody else? If you win the lottery, would you still feel a need to reject somebody else? No, nothing would bother you. You'd get off the ground, you'd glide. Nothing, really nothing would get in your way. You would glide. And you'd probably be able to give money to people who you once saw as rivals and opponents. I think you would. Because you just glide. You'd get through life gliding. Obviously, money could turn you can turn into a, a bad thing as well, because sometimes people turn go take a wrong avenue with money. I'm not saying win the lottery is the best thing in the world. I'm just saying that when you win the lottery, and if you think about winning the lottery, you'll see that you'll you, you get up to a place of gliding. You, you you feel like life's amazing. And therefore, if life's amazing, I don't care if my neighbor sticks his tongue out to me. I don't care if my other neighbor drops litter in front of my house. It doesn't bother me. Nothing really bothers me. I got the money to pay for it. So who cares? That's today's message. A powerful message. A powerful message about rejection. A powerful message about the concept of, of um, letting go of old ha bad habits. Of letting go of old bad habits. Of letting go of of rejecting others. I love you so much. And if you have any thoughts and comments, please feel free to share in the comment section down below. I love you so much because you all give me so much feedback, great feedback to help me on my spiritual ascension journey, to help me on my amazing journey of this great life, which I love. I love my life. And I want to thank you for helping me ascend spiritually. I love you. Leave comments in the comment section down below if you have any comments. Feel free to share away. And I wish you high vibes, high frequency. Have a great evening. I love you. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. And I love you.